everybody, welcome back. Well, voting day is tomorrow for the uniform and special election and then early voting. It starts on May 20th for the runoff election. So in today's community conversations, we have elections administrator Lisa Wise with the El Paso County Elections Department. Lisa, thank you so much for being here thank with us today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me this morning. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about voting trends and what's important to know if you plan on casting a ballot. So Lisa, we've known that typically El Paso has a very low voter turnout. In a recent article in the Texas Tribune, actually states that we actually have one of the lowest voter turnouts in the entire state. So a lot of this is being attributed to lack of knowledge when it comes to registering. What do people need to know, especially the younger population? The, the younger population, uh, you know, we do a lot of efforts to register them. We go to high schools, we go to colleges, but there's always seems maybe to be a disconnect between especially college students where uh, if I live in one state, can I register in the other state? Uh, and as long as you're only registered in one state, yes, you can. So you can register here if you go to Utah, but live in New Mexico or something like that. Uh, so we really try to go out there and just let them know these are the, these are the laws. One state is fine, whichever one you select. And then we also try to really make it uh, kind of a simple uh, process. So we simplify the process. Uh, we like to say, you know, one, two, three, four, and you're out the door. And so we, we have a little uh, video on our website. We talk about that with high school kids and college kids, that um, it's really not that uh, daunting. It's a, it's a quick process, and we do everything we can to make sure that voters are prepared ahead of time before they're even going into the polls. Great. And let's talk a little bit about the upcoming runoff election, because you were just talking with Jessica and I about how voters did have some questions for you all and then could you also talk about how you guys are preparing for the presidential election which is going to be a pretty big one right so we're actually in the process of uh, two elections right now which has been confusing for a lot of voters uh, we have what's called the uniform election and that's tomorrow and that's a much smaller election that is only for certain parts of the county that's just for kind of TOISD uh, lower valley water and city of San Eli so that is not the runoff right. but because they're so close we always have the small election between between the runoff and the actual primary, we do get some confusion there. So voters who do not live in those three entities would not be able to vote uh, tomorrow or we're, we're not able to vote this past early voting cycle. Uh, that's tomorrow. Then starting May 20th and just for five days, that's how the law, the law sets it out for early voting, May 20th through the 24th, we'll have the early voting for the runoff. The runoff is a, a much bigger election. However, uh, depending on what party you vote in, it may not be county wide. So if you vote in the Republican Party, the runoff only has one race on the ballot, which is CD 23, Congressional District 23. So if you don't live in Congressional District 23 and you live in 16, which is the majority of this county, and you vote in the Republican primary, you will not have a runoff ballot. There is nothing to vote on. If you live, um, if you're in, the, if you vote on the Democratic Party, you'll have two countywide races, which is the sheriff and district attorney, and then there's also the uh, legislative, the state rep 77, and constable one. So there's a couple different things on those ballots. But if you did vote in the primary in March, you have to align with that same party in the runoff. If you okay. didn't vote at all in March, you can select okay. during the runoff, which is May 28th. So there's still that opportunity, even if you didn't vote. Yes, we okay. get those questions all the time. If I didn't vote in the primary, can I still vote in the runoff? The answer is yes. Okay, some great information there. What are some of the misconceptions that people may have about voting? Um, I think we have a, a lot of misconceptions about how hard it is about how difficult it is. Um, and like I said, we try and do everything we can. We provide things on our website, like the sample ballot way ahead of time. So you can review that and make sure you know what you're um, looking at when you go into the polls. You can take that with you. You can use that for your own um, information. You cannot leave it there or promote it while you're on site. However, you can take that um, into the polls. Um, on election day, we have what are called vote centers now. And we started in 2020, but there's still some, I think, confusion on during early voting people know they can vote anywhere but on election day they can as well they no longer have to vote in their precinct oh, so uh, we we really try to promote that that we have that option um, of voting anywhere on election day just like early voting uh, if you vote by mail and don't think your mail ballot will be returned in time we have a drop spot at the courthouse where you don't even have to get down out of your car we uh, will just we're out there with a the team and we'll be able to on election day uh, take your ballot from you so there's a lot of things that we do to try to make it easy as possible and a lot of that information is on our website 
epcountyvotes.com. And we, we really try to drive people there and on the app because that has all of the information that, that we have and there, there is a lot out there. And there's people there who help you also cast a ballot. So that's very important. To right. We have well. the judges, yeah. we have the workers, and they are there to help you. Yeah. So these are your community members. These are, you know, your friends. Um, and they, they really put in long days and long hours. And we, we really uh, appreciate all of their help. And we, we hope that voters do too. Right. Yeah. And really quick, just an update on that. I know during the pandemic, we saw a shortage of polling workers. How, are, how is that looking for you guys right now? Uh, so far, we've been okay right now. Um, we have had enough for the pr uh, primary and for the uniform that we're having tomorrow. Uh, I don't anticipate we'll have a hard time in, in November. That's kind of the election that people really love to get out and work. Yeah. It's usually the smaller ones that we actually struggle where we need less people, but we still struggle because uh, not a lot of people maybe are interested in that. That doesn't uh, excite them. So, so far, I think we, we will be doing pretty well in November. We also have a lot of uh, re response from student clerks. Mm -hmm. So stu high school students who are 16 and over, uh, even if they're not registered to vote, can serve as a student clerk, and they can come work at locations and uh, assist in poll workers. My, I've had my daughter work for elections now, so and she <laughs> keeps bringing more and more friends, and it's um, it's great to kind of get the younger crowd, even though they're not registered, involved in in the process. Okay. And all of the information is all actually on the website as well. It be county. EPCountyVotes.com. That's right. So anything you need to know there about the elections, who's running, um, some sample ballots are on there as well. And we'll have yes. all of that information on our website. If you missed this community conversation or just tuning in, we'll have a replay of it on KFOXTV.com as well as past community conversations. All right, Lisa, very informative. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much for being here Thank with us today.